In this lecture, we will discuss about how to compute the order in the B tree. So, uh, before that, we need to understand why we are actually building the B tree. We are actually building the B tree to store the database tables. So, uh, the database tables are suppose this is the database table in which uh, there are some fields like row number, name, and then M1, M2, M3, M5 m6 m7 are actually representing the marks in the different subjects suppose this is the table for the result the university is compiling the result for display and uh, uh, the university like uh, dr apj abdul kalam technical university has around 3 lakh students and if it has to declare the result it cannot be published in any newspaper so what you will have to do you will have to write your number and then uh, uh, you will search it at the AKDU website and then you will get the result. So for searching the result, you need to write the roll number. And that roll number is a unique value. Why? That roll number is a unique value because for every student this roll number is the unique. There cannot be a duplicacy of this roll number. So by the roll number, you are interested in finding out these different values. Fine, you will write your roll number. But what you are interested in, you are interested in finding out these M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7 and then obviously there will be a total and the percentage also. And if you have any carry paper that will also tell you. So that, that actually comes with a logic or if you want to use those values also, those fields also in the same table, that also you can do. So there is a total and then percentage and then carry over papers. So you see that uh, in the same table by just querying the roll number you can find out all these values. So this roll number is unique. The first, the first thing that we make out of it is the roll number is unique. Another thing is that this table is a permanent table. Okay, This table is a permanent table. It is not made just for once. It is designed to retain for years. Okay, for years we want this table to be maintained. So this is a permanent table. It will be stored in the permanent storage. So this will be stored in somewhere like hard disk. Now, uh, if we have to search this query this table, then B tree is going to help us in that. We are going to design a B tree that will actually store all the roll numbers fine with the help of the roll numbers we will be finding the addresses of these records let's say this is record 1 record 2 record 3 record 4 and so on and so forth these are entirely a record a record for a student record for a roll number fine so with the help of the roll number we are interested in finding out the record okay so b3 nodes which are actually containing the keys, let's say K1 key and K2 key and K3 key and so on and so forth. Let's say the order is M, so it will be containing M minus 1 keys. So along with these keys, every B3 node is containing the address of the record. For K1 key, R1 is the record address. K2 key, R2 is the record address. For K3 key, R3 is the record address. Similarly for KM-1 key, RM-1 will be the record address. So along with the key, you need to uh, store the record addresses also because you are interested more in this record than this row number. So by searching the row number, you are interested in finding out this, these values. So these, are, these values are there in the record. And these records are there at some address in the hard disk. Fine. These records are there at some address in the so you need to find the address of these records. Now, since B tree is also being designed to to be there permanently, obviously the table is going to be there permanently. So B tree will also be going to be stored in the permanent storage, because we want that B tree again and again. So back every time we require the B tree, we will not build it again. So we will build it once and we'll save it on the permanent storage. So what will happen that this 
B3 will be stored in the permanent storage and the storage is like this. For a storage, let us try to understand the structure of the hard disk. The hard disk, this is a hard disk platter, right? There is, a, there is a hard disk. You can think of that you have a lot of plates and those are kept one below the another one, right? This is one plate and let's say this is another plate and let's say this is another plate and this is another plate. So many plates are there and let's say those plates are actually kept on some let's say a rod fine so all these plates are there at the center there is a rod so every plate is actually there on this rod and this is allowed to store the data on upper surface and the bottom surface of the plate also okay so these are called the platters In the hard disk, there are a lot of platters. On a platter, you can store the data on upside and downside as, as well. So suppose this is a hard disk platter. So on hard disk platter, we do the logical divisioning. Not the physical divisioning, but the logical divisioning. For the storage of the data, we are dividing the uh, surface in various parts logically. When we do the formatting, in the formatting itself, this logical divisioning is done. So in this logical divisioning, there are the concentric circles. This one, and then this one, and then this one, this one. These are called the tracks. Why? These concentric circles are called the tracks. And on these tracks, another divisioning is done. Why? Like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Similarly, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So on every track, smaller parts are created. These are called the sectors, okay, or blocks. And these blocks are usually of size 512 bytes. Fine. These sectors or blocks are of size 512 bytes. And these are the basic block for the storage. It means whenever the data has to be stored, every data has to get fixed or fitted into this 512 byte blocks. So what we are considering that every B3 node is going to be adjusted in a 512 byte block. Every B3 node is going to get adjusted in a 512 byte block. Fine. Okay. Let's take the example of a B3. Let's say we have M and then CH and then QJ. Let's say AB and then DF, IKL and P, RS and W, X, Y, Z. Fine. So let's say this is a B tree. If we say that all these key values are going to be stored in the B tree nodes, let's say these are the B tree nodes. Now along with the keys we are storing, okay, sorry this is the B tree. And along with the keys, we are storing the record addresses also. Fine. Now see, for every node, we are not only storing the key value and the record address, but we are actually storing the addresses of the child nodes also. Fine. If we have m key, m minus one keys, so we need to store the address of m childrens also. If you have two keys, three children addresses. Two keys, three children addresses, and so on and so forth. So. Here we have seen in the B3 node, we are storing the key value in the record address pair. Key value, record address, key value, record address. So let's make it in the angle bracket because this is a pair. Now we need to store the address of the children also. Fine. So let's make it again. So key value, record address, key value. Record address, key value, 
that is what it is. Alongside, we need to store the children's address also. So, child node address C1, C2, C3, CM minus 1, and finally CM. So, we need to store the addresses of the children also. So, what are the contents of B3 nodes? So, uh, the contents of the B3 nodes are going to be the key value, obviously. And then the record addresses and then child node addresses. Okay. So key values, record address and child node address. So these are the going to be the contents of every node. How many key values? If I'm saying that uh, there, uh, the order of p3 uh, node is m, so at maximum I can store m minus one key values. How many record addresses? M minus 1 record addresses. Child node addresses, how many children? So M children. If I have M minus 1 key, M child node addresses. So uh, if I sum all these, it means the M minus 1 keys. So M minus 1 key values. And then M minus 1 record addresses, let's say R represents the record addresses. And then M child node addresses. So M into, let's say B represents the block address or the address of a child. Sum of all these should be less than or equal to 512 bytes. Why I'm saying that this is 512 bytes? Because every B3 node is going to get adjusted in a block or a sector. So since every B3 node is going to be ad adjusted in a block or a sector, sector size is actually 512 bytes. Fine. So this is the formula by which I can find out the B3 order. Let's take a numerical example to solve this. Suppose every key is of size 2 bytes. Fine. So k is of 2 bytes, every key of size 2 bytes and uh, every record address is let's say of 10 bytes and let's say a block address is of 14 bytes and now you need to find out this m. So putting up all these values, let's understand this m minus 1 key values, so key values of bytes m minus 1 record addresses that is of 10 bytes every record address is of 10 bytes and then block addresses of 14 bytes so m child node addresses every child node address means child what is the child node child node is also a b3 node and child node is a b3 node and child node is going to be adjusted in a b3 node and that is that means that it is going to adjust it in the hardest sectors. The sector is a block, so that will be actually the block node address. So m into block address, which is of 14 bytes, and this is less than or equal to 512. Let's solve it again. 2m minus 2 plus 10m minus 10 plus 14m is less than or equal to 512. Bytes. So this is 14 plus 10, 24 plus 2, 26 m is less than or equal to 524. m is less than or equal to 524 divided by 26. Fine. So if you solve this, 524 divided by 26 approximately 23 point something something right so m is less than or equal to 23 point something something obviously you will take m as either 23 or less fine so this is how you compute the b3 order thank you